Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. What an exciting and ex uh, happy time we find ourselves whenever we come into the house of God. Good morning. Good to see you. Did I do that? Anyway, good morning, everyone, once again. We're so glad to be in the house of God today, and we want to welcome you to uh, worship. Uh, we had an exciting Sabbath school lesson, and uh, it's always uh, sets me on the, on, the, on the edge of my seat when we, when we deal with Sabbath school. So I want to encourage you to make it a part of your uh, Sabbath routine, to make it to Sabbath school. Uh, exciting times, it reminds us of who we are and where we are in this earth's history. Uh, welcome once again to our visitors. We are glad that you have come to visit with us. And we are also mindful of those who are online. We just want to re, uh, say hello to you. And uh, at this time, I want to encourage you all to maybe just find someone in the crowd over there and wave to them as you, if you're in the sanctuary, wave to somebody, find somebody to wave to them and say welcome to, to, the, to, to church and tell them you're gonna, we're going to make it, amen? amen? We're living in challenging times, and, but uh, as we heard in Sabbath school, God has promised to be with us through whatever challenge we face, and certainly we're facing some challenging times, and so... Uh, just be mindful of, we want to just rush on and move on to our bulletin. Uh, only one announcement that I want to make <laughs> this week, uh, but we know how that is. One announcement leads to two announcements. But that is that on Wednesday evening, we're going to have our um, church business meeting. Uh, that's going to be right after our uh, uh, prayer meeting. That is going to be a I should say it's going to be a devotional, and then we're going to go have our church business meeting. So we want to encourage all of you to attend. Now is, that, is that by Zoom as well? No, it's not. So you have to come in person. We're not going to open it up like that. But we're so glad to be in God's house. There are announcements that are popping on the screen. Uh, just make yourself aware of what's going on. Look at the bulletin, and so you can be informed. Uh, I'm especially excited today. Uh, uh, we have a couple of new babies in our midst, and I got to hold one of them, and that's always an exciting time. You know, um, Christ is soon to come, and each Sabbath we come here, we have an opportunity to be reminded of what we, is necessary for us to prepare for His coming. Uh, we want to encourage you that as we come into this house of worship, to be mindful, to be prayerful as well, because as we pray then it helps us to be able to focus on what god has for us as a people uh, we're so glad you're here today and at this time we also like to remind us as a church of how much god loves us uh, there's one text that sticks out in my mind that i always like to, re to repeat is that he has made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Uh, that's in 2 Corinthians 5. Listen, folk, uh, start meditating on that and be mindful of how much God loves us. He desperately wants to save us. And we who have come today believe that, and that's why we're here on the Sabbath day, and we remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall we labor and do all of our work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord our God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord Bless the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. Praise God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, once again we are honored to come into your presence today. Oh God, what an awesome God you are. 
Thank you so much for these 21 days of coming closer. Oh God, thank you for coming into our lives and rescuing us from ourselves. We pray for those who are here in this sanctuary today. We also pray especially for those who are online joining us. Lord, visit them also in a very special way. There are those that are sick that we've spoken to, those that are just cannot make it for whatever reason. We lift them up to you in praise, in prayer, and ask that you will visit all, visit your people where they are in a marked manner, we pray. In Jesus' name, we ask these blessings. Amen and amen. Man, now let us continue our worship. It's time for our songs. We ask that you stand. Greatness, no one can fathom. Great is the Lord, He is holy and just. By His power we trust in His love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true. By His mercy. Great is the Lord. 
and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. children's story and the children can stay in their seats and I will tell you a little story today. Um, I just want us to make sure to remember our children's offering which goes to support our wonderful Christian school across the way, Tulsa Adventist Academy. You can mark your tithe envelope and place it in any of the two collection boxes located in the back of the church or you can also um, there's an option to mark um, some offering for the children on the online giving option. Thank you. Okay. How many of the boys and girls here have ever really wanted to get to something on like the top shelf, maybe it was like something really high up in your closet or something that you just couldn't reach and you asked a big, strong person to help you get it. Have you ever done that before? You know, I remember needing help reaching something when I was younger. I would ask for help with my, from my mom or dad. They were both very strong. And um, they would help me get whatever I was trying to reach. Now look at this huge amount of weight that she has on her barbell. I mean, can you imagine? She must be really strong. And you know, I have taken weightlifting classes before and you can't just start out like that, can you? You have to start out with maybe two pounds or five pounds and then as you get stronger and stronger you can lift more and more weight well and there's even men who like to lift weights too there it's a picture of that too um you know i'm sure that the disciples were really impressed when they saw how powerful jesus was there's the story of Jesus and the storm. I don't know if you remember that story. Once, late in the day, Jesus said to them, let's go across to the other side. They took him in the boat as he was. Other boats came along. A huge storm came up. Waves poured into the boat. It almost sank. And Jesus was in the boat too. You know what he was doing? He was sleeping. 
His head was on a pillow, sleeping away. Well, his disciples woke him up and they said, Teacher, don't you care that we're about to drown? Awake now, Jesus told the wind to pipe down. And to the sea, he said, quiet, settle down. The wind ran out of breath. The sea became smooth as glass. Jesus said to his disciples, why are you such cowards? Don't you have faith at all? They were in absolute awe. They were shocked at how strong Jesus was. Who is this anyway, they asked. Wind and the sea at the at his beck and call, which means they obey him. Wow. They were so impressed at how strong Jesus was. I mean, have you ever felt a wind blow so strong with rain that you've ever seen it bend trees? I have. I've seen pictures of a storm so strong that it makes the trees, you know, they're usually this way, but then a, a big storm comes and the trees are blown so far over. You know, sometimes it can push you right down if you're out in a storm like that. What strength Jesus had to make that storm be still. They saw that God was so strong and right away they trusted him. Boys and girls, we see a lot of big and strong things in the world, don't we? The bright, bright sun, which God sends every day, the weight of the winter snow, the strength of swift water in a river, even someone getting over being sick and becoming strong again. These and many more things show how strong God is. Even when Jesus died and rose again, we can see the strength of God. It surely seems to me that if we trust strong people on this earth, then more than that, we can trust Jesus. Yes, we do trust Jesus. And I wasn't able to bring my ukulele today, but I thought we could still sing a song. And if you know the motions, you can do them, okay? My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the trees are His handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. <laughs> Would you please bow your heads with me for prayer? Dear God, we want to thank you so much for your love and care. Thank you for helping us know that we can trust you even when there are scary or sad things that are happening, we know that you are so strong. You can help us with whatever problems we face. Thank you for helping us be brave. There are times when we feel scared, but over and over again, you have helped us to be strong and brave. It's okay to be afraid, but we know that you can help us through it. Thank you so much for all of the examples in the Bible that we can read about how you are stronger than anything that we could ever face. We love you so much, dear Jesus, and we ask that you would please be with us now. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for that story. <clears throat> this morning we have opportunity to go back in history, uh, one of the special ministries our church has had for over 100 years is religious liberty, and once a year we get this special opportunity, so we're going to have a little video that will give us some insights from Lincoln Steed, our editor for decades. Enough of the mask. I know the COVID-19 reality, not a scare, has had us change our lives in incredibly significant ways. 
This is the annual Liberty Appeal, starting in January and continuing through at least May. We want you to be a partner with what we're trying to do with Liberty Magazine. At the beginning of the scare, some months ago, last year, I remember going out to my garden to try to depressurize and our neighbor's wife was gardening on the other side and, and I think by design and she leaned over the fence and she says, what do you think about this pandemic? Is this one of the last plagues that the Bible speaks about? All I can say is I hope not because things remain to be done. We cannot allow the church just to lie down and passively accept the situation. This is the moment, as the Bible says, cry aloud, spare not. This is a testing time. Liberty Magazine is in the forefront of getting the great gospel of liberty, as Paul called it, the gospel commission in front of those who are setting directions for our country. Most every time I speak about religious liberty, I quote from the Ellen White compilation, Last Day Events. And the very first quote in that admirable little book says this, written in 1914, she says, the present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living, rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. That's very true with the COVID reality. Of course it is. And also those are the people who read Liberty Magazine and says they are watching the relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element. And they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place, that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. Please, if you have the means, now we can use them. Liberty Magazine is read. I receive uh, a number of letters constantly, and lately I've got one from a judge in Philadelphia, and she says, I've never written uh, since my school days to any magazine, but she says, I just want you to know you've given me hope. People need hope in these times. I got another letter from a retired lawyer and his wife. They said, we've, we've read Liberty Magazine for years. We want to keep reading it. You supply the information we need to understand what's happening. Remember, we're told that perhaps at the end of all things, many of our neighbors might say, you knew. Why didn't you tell us? With Liberty Magazine, we tell the historic reason for religious liberty, the constitutional reason, and the biblical reason. So to sum up, you and I as Seventh-day Adventists are faced with a great test. Will we be active? Will we continue to support Liberty Magazine and the Associated Religious Liberty Program that includes interceding for you in the workplace, that includes speaking directly to legislators and having a hand perhaps, sometimes not quite at the table as we imagine, but a voice that they listen to when legislation is putting together and perhaps even holding back a great evil because there are still many to be warned, this is your moment. And thank you in advance for responding to this Liberty Magazine and Religious Liberty Appeal. What a privilege is, beyond, is given to us today. What a privilege in a time of test to prove, in this case, positive. It's not like being sick with the disease. It's about like being infected with the enthusiasm for the coming kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you again. You can see his heart is in it and he wants us to join with him. And it has been a blessing even for people within this Tulsa area to receive this through the decades as well but it does take money to operate. It is true you can go to libertymagazine.org and read not only this, uh, I believe this was last, last time's issue, they have another one that's just come out. The, even the back archives are available if you know people that say, well, even the $7.95 per year for a subscription is more than they want. 
Unfortunately, the last couple of years, we haven't received the brochures that many of you might be used to where you put in so many subscriptions you'd like to put in and so forth. But like he pointed out, over the next few months, you'll still have opportunity even if you're not prepared today. And as we see events unfolding in the world around us, and we may realize if there ever was a good time to support this notion, it's now. And the, the book, Great Controversy, some of you may be familiar with. If you haven't read that, you know, uh, there are souls being saved by just reading that. And even that chapter, Liberty of Conscience Threatened, makes you think of the back of this um, magazine. Many people have seen the movie that's been, I think, in 2016, Hacksaw Ridge, the story of the Seventh-day Adventist young man who was a Medal of Honor winner by helping 75 people over the side. And his story of standing up for his faith, what he believed, was a testimony to many people. But he, uh, Douglas Laycock, the original intent from the first religion, he re re reports on the back issue of this. One lesson of religious persecutions is that the free exercise clause must protect religiously motivated conduct as well as belief and speech. Conscientious objectors to government policy are willing to suffer greatly rather than violate their conscience. Attempts to coerce religious conscience lead inevitably to persecution. And of course, we all realize those days are coming. And as he points out, while mercy lingers a little longer, let's do our part. As we have our prayer this morning, we'll pray. I'd like to thank those of you who I've prayed for me with my little mishaps. You know, they say haste makes waste, and I demonstrated that when I ran too fast, stumbled, and broke a couple fingers, but it looks like the Lord worked out some details to get it on the mend. We can thank the Lord that he's the Lord that heals us, and we can be grateful for many of us who have physical or mental or physical challenges, spiritual struggles. God hears them all, and he's, he's a, a mighty God, one who has abilities that far exceed any human abilities. We're so thankful that he is all-knowing and all-powerful and, uh, and all-loving, willing to help us be his representatives. So as we have our morning prayer, those who can pray with me on their knees here, wonderful. If you can't, God hears those prayers, whatever position we're in. Those at home, please join us as well. Gracious Father, as we come to you this morning with our morning prayers, we just want to thank you that we have been blessed by our loving Heavenly Father with his own dear Son that poured out all that heaven had to offer to make it possible to save us from our sins. Help us in this sin-sick world to be willing to turn loose as we see the events taking place around us and the chaos and so forth that's unfolding to know that you have a future and a hope for your people. Help us to realize that certain books like Great Controversy, you've told us, can be put in the hands of people and people who even had them on their books shelves years ago will take those books off when they see events taking place. They'll read them again and they'll see that the very events you prophesied to take place that have been entrusted to Seventh-day Adventists to deliver to a world gives the most methodical, clear picture of the events that will take place just before you come back. We're so thankful for your kind mercies that we have nothing to fear for the future, that you promise to hold us by that hand that'll never let go, no matter how serious events may shape up. And you've told us, the Apostle Daniel, that there's a time of trouble coming such as the world has never seen. We realize while peace reigns a little longer, and before our ways are hedged up, even in this city of Tulsa, that we'll do our part to be those kind of neighbors, pass out the kind of literature that could be a blessing to them, could plant seeds for your kingdom, that we could uh, be a winsome witness for your kingdom that would help build up your cause here on earth. We thank you for each one who has um, been participating with our offerings, who've been so faithful with their tithe. We realize you give us everything, all that we have, all that we are, we realize is yours. 
And so just to re remind us who is the great owner of us and all we have, thank you for the privilege of putting a little tithe in to help advance your cause and support the gospel ministry. Thank you for the opportunity for the offerings too that we can put in, not only for Liberty Magazine, but the many other needs that the church has from week to week to just keep things going. We realize many times you may give us these opportunities to test our own faith, to believe that we can be a part, but we realize it's not our nickels that you need. You need our hearts. You want our whole body to be put into the offering plate, to give ourselves living sacrifices Someone one time said that the problem with us living sacrifices is we want to keep crawling down off the altar. So we do pray, Father, we'd be faithful. And even after our 21 days of praying and fasting, seeking you, we don't want to crawl off of this closer experience. We want to go deeper and get to know you better and better and uh, more and more as we see the day approaching. We thank you for hearing our prayers this morning and just pray special blessings on each one who's here, those who are listening online, those who, for one reason or another, can't be here, those who are struggling again, getting their physical health back, their mental health, their spiritual health. We pray for each one, and we thank you again. In Jesus' precious name, we ask these things now. Amen. Please stand and join us as we sing our song of consecration, Speed Hour of Prayer.
Thank you so much. You may be seated. Happy Sabbath Church family. Give me a minute here to get situated. Technology is an interesting thing. The truth of the matter is, I was I was feeling that song. And I could have done it while I was doing it. And then when the song was over, I was like, <sighs> Samson. Okay, almost there. Maybe. <laughs> Forgiveness is all in the room, amen? amen? All right, there we go. Now, now we're making progress. Now we're making progress. Happy yeah. Savage Church family. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm super excited this Sabbath because, I mean, we made it, right? We've made it uh, four, five weeks of, of, of sermon series, but, but 21 days of fasting and prayer. And that's something to be excited about. Like, we've, we, we made it through. Like, there are times, uh, I don't know about you guys, but there are times in, 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 I was doing the Daniel fast, but there were times where I was just like, man, I just need something of sustenance. I need to eat something because I was like, this is difficult. And there was moments where I was like, man, I want to look this thing up on YouTube. But after cutting YouTube, I was like, like oh, shoot, what am I going to do, right? But, but in those moments, it gave me an opportunity to, to cling closer to God, to, to have an opportunity to, okay, let's redirect our focus on, on something else and, and let's lift this up instead. And so I've, I've had people that have given me text messages, have given me phone calls talking about how God is, it has worked something new in them and how they came to the end and, and, and maybe they were feeling a little tired or a little bit exhausted. But the truth of the matter is they feel on fire and filled with energy and excitement for what God is, is doing in their life. And, and it gets me excited about what God is, 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 is about to do in this church, like with our families, uh, as us as individuals, but us as a church. Like God is getting ready to do some marvelous things for this place. And so before I get started, I think I left, did I leave it? I left the marker up there. Hey, could you bring that? Thank you. <laughs> but before we get started this Sabbath, there's, there's, there's something that I wanted to make mention of. Thank you. There's something I wanted to make mention of, and that is, uh, I, I, uh, last week, I mentioned a little bit about counseling in, in, in the sermon, and I, I had somebody reach out to me just asking about the, the, you know, the process, the details of it, and, and I thought to myself, oh, I should, I should give that also to those who are either watching online or those here. If, if you are considering or thinking about doing counseling for yourself, feel free to connect with me, feel free to connect with maybe one of the elders, and, and, and we can do our best to get you situated at a, at a solid place that will give you a lot of growth and development in um, just seeking to find out more about yourself, or maybe even, even marriage counseling. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that if you, if you want an opportunity to, 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 to have those conversations, right, to go deeper uh, with, with your spouse, then feel free to get connected, and we could uh, find a way to hook you up because we want, we want you to grow. We want you to grow in the Lord, and sometimes counseling is a, a very good uh, way of experiencing that growth. Something else that I want to mention is next week on Wednesday, we got a business meeting. Now, I, I know uh, it may sound like, oh, business meeting. I'll be honest with y'all. I barely even know what a business meeting really is. <laughs> hey, this is you know, a for, first rodeo. You know, I don't really know much of what a business meeting is, but the idea that uh, has been explained to me, it's, it's you know, guiding the direction and, and the focus of the church. And after getting off of 21 days of fasting and praying, I've personally been praying for this church. I've been praying for all of us here in, in the direction that God is wanting to take us as a church. So this is giving us opportunity to come together and to talk about that direction. 
Um, my hope and my prayer is from this, we, we develop focus groups and, and we develop prayer groups so that after we, you know, coming out of this fast, it's not just, it's not just, oh, we went deep for two seconds and that's it. No, no, but from this that God uses as a catalyst to push this church into, into his vision for this community and what he wants for this community. So I encourage everybody to come out. I don't care if you're young. I don't care if you're old. I don't care if you're a new member. I don't care if you've been here all your life. No matter what the case is, I encourage you to come out because this meeting could uh, guide the direction of this church for the next year and even 10 years. So I encourage y'all to come out. Please don't miss it. And, And if you're worried about COVID and whatnot, I'm just here to tell you like you can, we will spread out. We'll spread out. People will be sitting up here. People could be sitting in the back. If you really feel that uncomfortable, you can get a chair and sit all the way in the back over there. And nobody going to judge. We all respect, you know, the distance that you desire. Um, but we encourage you to come out because it's going to be a phenomenal opportunity just for, just for all of us. Um, so without uh, further ado, we, about to, we hop into it. So y'all know that this is the last sermon in this series that we're doing called Below the Surface. This is the last one. There's not, we're not, you know, there's no, there's no sermon series after this. This is the last sermon. For those that uh, maybe are tuning in and you don't really know what we're talking about when we say below the surface, we're going to explain it for you one more time, right? Uh, When it comes to a relationship with God, uh, many of us think that we're going below the surface, right? We think we're going deep in our experience with the Lord, when the truth of the matter is, for many of us, we're, 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 we've been walking along the shore, just getting our ankles wet. And God has been calling us to go deeper in, in our experience with him. But for many of us, we may be been satisfied with just getting our ankles wet. We've been okay with just walking along the shore. And God's like, no, 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 I want to bring change and transformation to your life. I want to do something new in you. Come deeper, right? Or maybe for some of us, uh, when, it came to our, when it comes to a relationship with God, we put it aside. Or maybe we put it off because we, we, we tried to go deep, right? Or we got a little taste of it, and, and, and it was barely anything to really explain the relationship or really uh, uh, see the beauty of it. And this is the quote we've been looking at. It says, the moment we don't fully experience something is the moment we don't realize the beauty of it. And so whether we're walking along the shore and we're like, oh, no, I'm good with just walking along the shore, or whether we're just somebody that just gets a little taste and, ah, no, I'm good. No matter what the case is, God is saying for both parties, I need you to go deeper. I need to do something new in your life. I need to do something new in in the lives of your family. Uh, We need to do something new in your church, and and we need you to go deeper. And when we go deeper, we recognize the beauty and for many people uh, that have been going on this 21-day fast, maybe, maybe you saw a beauty. You saw something that was amazing. And you're excited. And you're on fire. But, but, but proceeding forward from this, I, I want to go into uh, uh, the last sermon uh, of this series, which is entitled, A Daily Depth. A Daily Depth. As much as doing a 21 days of fasting and praying is awesome and it's amazing and it's uh, revitalizing and there's excitement and there's joy and it's like, yeah, uh, that's really not what God calls us to. He doesn't call us to just take a month and, and, and set aside a month to, to, to focus in on him and, and then after the month is over, just, oh man, I, I had that month and it was amazing. I went deep for a month and it was amazing. He doesn't just call us for a month in our year. He doesn't just call us for a a week, right? Like one day a week to to go deep with him. And so uh, we utilize church as an experience to go deep with him just just for a day and to experience some joy. And and man, it was was, was good singing, good good message. I feel, you know, chatted with the brothers and the sisters. And then you go home. Like, no, no, God doesn't just want one a week, right? God doesn't just want twice a week, right? I went to prayer meeting. It was good. Gave me some little energy to kick it through the rest of the rest of the, uh, the week until the Sabbath. Right? Like, 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 yeah, there's a beauty in the Sabbath. There's a beauty in, in, uh, in Wednesday night worship. There's a beauty in even taking a month and focusing in. There's, there's amazingness and depth to it. But the truth of the matter is, what God longs for is for us to have a daily depth with him, to go deep daily. And so if we're proceeding forward from this and we're, 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 we're ending this series, God's like, yeah, that's cool. We end in the series. But the truth of the matter is, can we continue to go deep, though? 
Because if we're, if we're done with this, right, and we just go back to the way things were, maybe go back to a little bit of the stress, go back to some of the anxiety, go back to the distractions, go back to, to the way we used to live. God's saying, like, look, 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 I need you to go back with me, though. I need you to go back with me. And so as, as we're diving into the sermon, and as we're thinking on the context of going back with him, this is what I believe God is calling all of us to do. And it's, 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 it's in the simple phrase of accept the daily invitation to a lifetime transformation. God is inviting us daily to spending time with him. Daily, he's, he's inviting us. Daily, he's waiting for us. Daily, he's calling us. Daily, he's trying to work with us. And all he's asking us to do is to accept that daily in, I, invitation. And the moment, the moment that we give in and accept that daily invitation, God's like, all right, all right, we're going to do something. Like, like, I know you got a lot to do in your day, but you accept this daily invitation. Oh, we about... We're about to turn that a lot into, into, into a whole lot. We're about to do some work with it, right? I know, I know that, that today you want to laze around and you're not feeling like it, but if you accept this invitation, I will give you the strength and the energy that you need. Like, like I know that you're, you're troubled with all the worries of the world, but, but, but if you just accept this daily invitation, I'm going to give you the peace that passes understanding as you go throughout your day. And so... As we go into the sermon, my prayer for all of us is that we may accept this invitation uh, that God so freely offers to us daily and that he may work in us a lifetime transformation. Amen? Amen and amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for each individual in the room. I pray for every family in the room. I pray for every newborn baby in the room. I pray for uh, this church as a whole. I pray for those watching here online that God, as we go through the scriptures, as we read the stories, that God, you may open our hearts, open our minds to being able to receive you, that when you give us that invitation, God, we may grab it with everything invested in us. And as we grab it, you may work in us, God, a, a, a transformation a transformation that, that, that lasts a lifetime. Lord God, we thank you and we just ask you to join us. We ask for your Holy Spirit to join us in our hearts. We ask for you to speak that we may be filled with the fullness of God as our prayer and our pre plea, Lord. We thank you and we pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 14. Uh, and we're going to be looking at one passage but we're going to dissect it into different areas so that we can really see what's being uh, talked about here. And so turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, and we're going to begin reading in verse 25. Luke chapter 25. And we're going to, be, we're going to read uh, 25 through 26 real quick first. And so it starts off by saying, Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, so Jesus is about to speak to these multitudes here, and as he turns and speaks to them, this is what Jesus tells them. He tells them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, 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 Jesus says some pretty intense, vicious words here, right? He, he, he hits this group or this, this, this multitude with the reality, hey, if you don't hate your mother and your father, if you don't hate your wife and your children, <laughs> if, you, if you don't hate your brothers and your sisters, if you, if you don't hate even your own life, not worthy to be my disciple. And that can, that can come off kind of aggressive, especially in our culture. It's like, what you mean? Like, you, you don't want me to, you don't want me to, I thought, what happened to love your neighbors? Like, we ain't about it no more. Jesus, do you switch it up on us? Uh, uh, the reality here is when you look at the word hate in, 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 in the original text, uh, it doesn't actually mean to hate. Yeah, it doesn't actually mean to hate them. What it actually means 
is to love less. So, 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 so Jesus is okay with the love. He's, he's, he's not against love for your mother or your father. He's not against love for your brother, your sister, your wife, your children. He's not against love in those contexts. Even, even, even he's not against love. He's like, he's like, I'm not against the love. It's love less. Love less. So the question is posed to us, right? So, so, so who do you love most? Who do you love most in your life? Who is it that you cherish most in your life? And I, I want you to grab that person, that picture, and ask yourself, when compared to your love for Jesus, is it a, is it a love that's less? A love that's, that's more? And we could even go to the point and say, uh oh, uh oh, what do you love most? All right? Maybe for some of us, it's, maybe it's not necessarily, I, I, I love, my, love my job. I love the, the, the opportunities that are ahead of me. I love uh, 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 my car, right? <laughs> I mean, if you love your car, that's kind of intense. I'm not even going to lie to you. <laughs> that's, that's really intense, right? But, 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 but the question still poses who or what do you love most? Because Jesus is saying here, like, look, look, look. If you don't love me most, like, if you don't love le- them less than you love me, then this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. And he even goes on to further say in, 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 in verses 27, in verses 27, he, he, he tells us here, and whoever does not bear his own cross, or his cross, and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now, now, something that we have to recognize here is for us, we, we hear this passage and, and we get it in its context, right? We get it in its context as in like, oh, Jesus died on the cross. He wants us to, you know, you know right? We hear it in its context. But for them, Jesus didn't die on the cross yet. So when Jesus says these words, it's like, they, they know cross as, as the most cruel uh, death that somebody could bear. So in their minds, they're like, pick up a cross and, and come after you. That means, that means die to, to the way you view stuff. Die to your thinking. Die to your understanding of the world. Die and, and follow me. Follow my thinking. Follow my ways. Do what I do. And so Jesus is setting up the grounds here. He's saying, like, look, look, it's not just loving your family less, right? It's not just loving uh, uh, yourself less. This is, this is also putting to death the way that you've processed life, the way that you view things. He's like, I, I, this is what we need to die. This is what needs to go on the cross and, 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 and die. So picking up your cross and, and following Jesus is, is entering into this understanding. It's like, look, everything, nothing my thoughts didn't matter, my way of life, my thinking, the way I viewed uh, uh, humility, the way I viewed uh, 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 a Christian walk, the way I viewed all this. It does, I'm following after Jesus and his example and the example that he sets before me. And so Jesus continues to explain this, this whole situation. And, 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 I, and, and I, love, I love that he emphasized the cross and put this in. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we willing to die daily. Because even in another context where he, he brings up this cross, he says, carry your cross daily. Like, this is a daily thing. Every day, pick up your cross. And the passage continues, and, and he says, for which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? At least after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him. And this is what they say. They say, this man began to build and was not able to finish. So when it, comes to, when it comes to building something, we have to count the cost. We have to see, like, okay, how much does this really cost in order to get the true value of this? And he continues on and says, or what king going to war against another king does not sit down and first consider whether he, has, whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And he continues, says, or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. And he finishes by saying, so likewise, whoever of you 
does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. And so when it comes to this, this analogy that Jesus is setting up, he's, he's giving us this picture of these, these individuals who are, are, are planning to go this distance, right? They, they want to go deep with God, but they're not counting the costs. They're not counting the costs. They're not coming to understand. And, 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 so, and so it sums up in this point, we have to count the cost for connecting with him. We have to. And, and, and what is the cost? It's, it's this idea of, of, of loving those around us less than we love him. And sometimes it's easy to grab onto the saying, oh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, 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 so maybe I can uh, uh, skip out on connecting with God for the sake of connecting with others. Or maybe, 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 maybe we, we go in that direction and God is sitting here like, no, 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 no. That's not, that's not how this works. Or maybe our ideology and the way we think and the way we process stuff, we're holding on to that. And God's saying, no, 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 and count the cost. You have to set that aside too. You have to set down the way you view things. If you're coming into my presence, if you're coming to try to connect with me, if you're coming and you want to follow me, if you want this relationship, you have to set this stuff down. And what happens when we don't count the costs is, is we see the journey, we see the depth, we see the, the building, right, that we want to build. We see this war that we want to fight and, and win, and we see it. And as we're going after it, by not counting the cost, we find ourselves losing the war. We find ourselves lo- losing the war. We find ourselves uh, uh, coming to the foundation being built and, 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 and not having anything to actually build the building. We find, ourselves, uh, uh, we find ourselves being impatient. We find ourselves being unkind. We find ourselves uh, uh, having outbursts. We find ourselves not having peace. We find ourselves having anxiety, depression, frustration, all these emotions, all these things attacking us. We find ourselves going through that, and we're like, God, where's the peace? God, where's this thing at, or where's that thing at? And God is saying here, like, look, you didn't count the cost in the beginning. You weren't willing to... To, to, to love less. You weren't willing to die daily and by not willing to do those things, you're not going to finish the building. Not willing to do those things, you're, you're not going to win this war. It's not going to happen. Now, for some of us, we might be thinking to ourselves, okay, okay, Samson, I see, where, I see where you're going with this, but how does this really have to do with connecting with him, though, right? Because we're talking about picking up your cross and following him, but, but really, how does that have to do with that, that, that connection with him, that intimate time with him? What does that have to do with that, though? And for this, I actually want to take us to the story that Jesus says before this. Because Jesus says a story before this that gives us understanding of how to view what he just said. So go with me to verses 15 of Luke chapter 14. Verses 15, we're going to see what exactly was Jesus talking about here. And it starts off in verse 15, and it says, Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, he was speaking to Jesus, he said, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. The thing that Jesus said before this was the story where he's saying, like, hey, like, uh, uh, the people that come to the, to the Great Supper, and, and they try to get a good seat at the Great Supper, and he's all like, no, 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 you thought you was getting a great seat. You're going to go over there in the back. That's where you're sitting at. And then the people that go over there and sit in the back, no, 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 you're not sitting in the back. You're coming to the front. And so Jesus is teaching lessons on humility, right? And so teaching those lessons on humility, Jesus is like, oh, oh, you want to talk about feasts now? Oh, you want to talk about feasts? All right, let's talk about feasts, right? Because I need you to understand something about feasts since you're talking about being excited and blessed are those who are going to eat at that feast. Like, okay, let me say something. So he, so he said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many. Hey, everybody, come eat. Invited many people. And sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, come for all things are now ready. So, so, so this proclamation was made, hey, everything has just been prepared for you. Like, everything has been prepared for the people that I've invited to this, right? For some of us that didn't get it, do you know that God has something ready for, 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 for us daily? Amen. He has something ready for us daily. 
every single morning, God got something ready for us daily. He, God's sitting there, I got peace ready for you right here. I have joy ready for you right here. I have, I have, I have forgiveness ready for you right here because you're running around and you're mad at stuff, but I got forgiveness right here for you. Every single morning, God has something ready for us. And he's like, yo, tell him, come, it's ready. So the story continues, and it, and it says, but they, with one accord, began to make excuses. There's nothing, there's nothing necessary about the sermon with the one accord. I just thought it was really fascinating how you could be with one accord, but in the wrong direction, right? Like we talk about, oh, we got to be with one accord. We got to be with one accord in the right direction, right? Because these people, they was one accord making excuses. And so the question I ask for us is, are, are we making excuses, are we making excuses because, because in reality, that's, uh, God's calling us, and it's like, I don't know. As a church, are we making excuses? As a family, are we, are we making excuses? Of one accord, but we're making excuses. But the story continues, and, and we go in depth to some of these excuses that are being made. It says, the first say to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. He was polite. He said, yo, I just bought something. Could you, you understand? And another, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Him too, he was chill. He was like, hey, look, I got some stuff. You understand, right? Like you, we cool, right? And then the next one, I mean, just hit, hits me personally, because, you know, with the plans and the futures and whatnot. Still another said, I've married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. This dude didn't even say, like, hey, could you have me excused? No, he just said, I can't come. Sorry. I have other arrangements. And so the story continues and says, so that the servant came and reported these things to the master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, go out quickly into the streets, the lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and there's still room. There's still room. It continues on, it says, Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways, into the hedges, and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Like, wants to connect with as many people. He's like, yo, if they're not coming, Bring some more, because I got, I got some stuff here that I'm trying to give out. And Jesus says, For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. The truth is that God gives everyone an invitation. But the question is, do we accept it? Right? Jesus just got done talking about this, 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 this feast one time in, in, in the passage, but then he continues and he goes into this feast, and as he's explaining this feast and breaking down this feast, he's saying, like, look, the, the master was trying to give out food, but nobody wanted it, so we ended up giving it away to all, all these people telling them to come in. If, as long as they're willing to come in, then we're going to be eaten. We're going to be filled. We're going to be satisfied. And what's very interesting is this goes into the passage which we just read. Right? The passage that we just read about, 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 about uh, uh, take up your cross, about uh, uh, loving less your, your mother and your father. Like this is, and this is how it goes in. Now great multitudes went with him. And I could imagine, I could just imagine that as these multitudes were going with him, that, that, that they had their, this ideology in their mind that like, man, if we follow Jesus, maybe we're going to be those people that, that, that partake of the feast. Maybe they were hungry. It's like, Jesus is going to feed us? Is Jesus going to do something? And what's crazy is, as we go into the passage, it's Jesus is talking about, oh, no, if you want to come after me, you've got you to gotta love less. These things. These people. You have to love less. You have to, you have to be willing to die daily. You have to be willing to take up your cross. And, and Jesus is saying this because he's saying, because all of these things are going to prevent us from connecting with him. All of it. It's going to prevent us. 
It's going to stop us. It's going to slow us down. It's going to keep us from going to the supper because we're going to look at, at, our, at this land we just bought and we're going to look at connecting with God and we're going to say, hey, give me a minute. Let me check out this land real quick. We're going to look at the oxen that we just bought, the five oxen we just bought, and we're going to look at God and be, ah, just give me a minute because there's a lot. We're going we're gonna to look at, we're gonna look at uh, our spouse, right, our, chil- our newborn children. We're going to look at these things, right, and be like, oh, man, God, just, I, just give me a minute because, you know, I'm, you know. You know. And maybe we should translate it, right? We're going to look at the new job that we just got. God, I'm sorry, like this new job, you gave it to me. We're going to look at the new job, that uh, excuses, we're going to look at, we're gonna look at uh, the, the people in our lives and be like, God, there's, there's a lot I have to do. We've got to connect with these individuals and I have to do all these things. Just, just give me a minute. After it's all done, I'm going to connect. And we keep waiting for the right time. The right time. That invitation. Jesus is waiting every single day. We wait for the right time. Nothing. Nothing. And so what we have to do is we have to count the costs of connecting with him. We have to. We have to count it. As we see this, this, this road ahead of us, as we see 2021 ahead of us, and we're, we're thinking to ourselves, man, I want this year to be rich, spiritually speaking, and I want to be on fire for the Lord, and I want God to do amazing things at First Tulsa Church, and, and I want God to do amazing things in my family, and I want amazing things to happen to me as a person. I want amazing things to happen. But the truth of the matter is, if we're hoping and wishing and dreaming and, and, and just seeing stuff, but we're not coming to reality and counting the costs, we're not coming to reality with, 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 with okay, uh, do I love my family uh, more than I love God? That's, 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 that's a question. Do I love my job, my occupation? Do I love my ideology and the way I view things? And am I not willing to shift and change? Am I not willing to be molded and created into his image? Or am I stern and focused and I think I have everything right? If we're not willing to count the cost and saying, okay, I'm willing to cut this stuff off and be fully connected and dive into his word and dive into his presence. If we're not willing to do that, then nothing's really going to happen. But the question is, like, why is all this important, though? Right? Like, 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 like connecting with him. Why is it so important that we daily connect with him? Because it's like, okay, we can, you know, connect here, connect there. But why is it important for the daily? And I'm here to tell us that the story continues, right? Jesus keeps talking. After, after he talks about uh, uh, picking up your cross and following him, he keeps talking. And he goes into verse 34, and this is what he begins to say. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has an ear to hear, let them hear. Uh, Jesus talks about salt when he, when, he, when he was preaching on the Sermon of the Mount and he, and he talked about light and he talked about it in the context of good works and what you're doing, right? He's all like that, that people may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so when he's talking about the salt here, he's saying like, look, you've lost the flavor. Like, 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 like you've lost the flavor completely. Like, like, at, at, and we, and we try to think to ourselves, as a church, like, 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 have we lost that flavor? As a family, have we lost that flavor? And when I say that, I'm saying, do you make a difference in the church that you sit in? Does the church make a difference in the community that it sits in? Do you make a difference in the family that you're in? Or, or, or do we make things worse? And so Jesus is saying here, like, look, the reason it's so important for you to connect with me and the reason it's so important for you to count these costs is so that when you go into the world, that you actually make a difference. That you actually change something. And so when it comes to dining with him, dining with him brings transformation. It brings transformation. Like, like, like when we spend time, like, like when he sends that invitation, he says in the morning, he calls to us and says, yo, hey, I want to spend time with you. And, and, and we spend time with him. That time we spend with him, it brings transformation. And when we go into the world, we go into the world as salt with flavor. We go into the world as salt with flavor everywhere we go. And so I want to, I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to illustrate how beautiful this can be. Because I think it's important for us to see 
just how beautiful this can be if we allow God to work. And my prayer is that this, that this works and it doesn't flip over and I don't make a mess because that would be tragic. But God is good all the time. Amen. You see, for many of us, when it comes to our walk with the Lord, right? It's like, it's like a sponge, right? And so, and so God's, God's telling us like, hey, look, Send out the invitation. I want to hang out with you. I, w- I want to connect with you. I want to dine with you. Hey, are you willing to come through? So I have to connect and we say, God, give, give me a minute. There's some things I got to take care of. And so as, as we go into the world, the world is, is pressing us and we have nothing to give. The world squeezes us. We have nothing to give. Our, 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 our kids call out for us for, 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 for wisdom, for guidance, and all we give is angry screams and, and nothing. Right? We try to connect at our job, but for some reason everything feels dull and dry, and it seems like you have nothing. Nothing to give the people at your work. Nothing to give your family. Nothing to give your friends. Nothing to give anybody but dryness. Dryness. And so it stresses us out. It freaks us out because people are asking. They need their cup to be filled and, and, and they're hoping for something, right? But we don't know. It. Jesus calls us to, to, to carry him to the world. And, and, and as we come to the world, it's like we ain't got nothing to give them. <laughs> you know, but, 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 God, but God's saying, like, hey, but if you would, in the morning, take time to soak up in my presence, you and I and I and you, like, if you would take time to just, to just soak up in my presence, just for a minute, take some time, slow down, breathe, relax, let's have a conversation, let's connect, let's dine. Then when we come out to the world, we drip in everywhere we go, right? Like, 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 like people call out to us and we're like, oh, what you need? I got you. I got you. And guess what happens, right? Halfway through the day, you're like, man, you know, I'm kind of kind of bugged out. It's been a long day. God, let me connect with you, like 15 minutes. 15 minutes, five minutes, spend some time in worship, singing a song. And God's like, all right, I got you. Keep going. You're just dripping everywhere. Everywhere. People, people asking you questions like, yo, 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 how is it that you give and give and give? It's because I'm getting, right? It's because I'm getting. It's because I'm going to somebody, and they're giving me the energy. They're giving me the strength. Like, like, like I used to be stressed, and, and, and I used to not be focused, and it used to be hard to do things. I used to have people calling out to me, crying out to me, and I had nothing to give them. But when I started spending time in his presence, everywhere I went, I, I, I was able to give. People were saying, you said the exact words I needed to hear. It's almost like it came straight from heaven. And it's like, look, that's because this morning I didn't spend time by myself. I spent time with somebody that filled me. And I was able to fill. And for many of us, God is calling us, right? He's calling us to be this light to the world. He's calling us to, to do, right? He's the light, but he's calling us to be the light. What does that mean? That means we have to go to him and get some light. We have to go to him and get some light so that everywhere we go, we just, I promise I'm going to clean this up. Everywhere we go, we're dripping. We're dripping. We interact with people uh, and they're just like, yo, like, 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 I don't know. It's just something about you that, that, that makes me uh, uh, feel, feel, feel like I'm in the presence of somebody who, who's been spending time with the Lord. I don't know what it is, but, but there's something about your smile. There's something about the way you said hello. It was like you cared about me. It was like you honestly wanted to know what was going on with me when you said, how are you doing? And a lot of that is not because we spend time reading a book that builds knowledge in our head. No, 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 no. That time comes from spending time with a Jesus who can actually bring transformation to our life. And so we have to count the cost. We have to look at what's preventing us. What's preventing us for that time with him? What's keeping us? What's, what's, what, is it, what is it that we love more than him? And look, I'm telling you, you, ain't, you don't have to spend time just, just, just in the morning. You can spend time at night. There's nothing wrong with that. 
There's nothing wrong with spending time with him. Uh, uh, you know, Daniel played, prayed three times a day. You could pray seven times a day. But we have to count the cost and we have to make sure that we're, we're, we're accepting that invitation. And so, uh, I want to take us to Revelation chapter 3 because I think there's, there's something beautiful in here for us to see. And, it, and it's Jesus. <laughs> it's Jesus himself. And he's, he's, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. God is knocking on the doors of our hearts. And he brings, he brings that invitation every single day for us to connect with him. He's saying, like, I know that you're dry. I know that you're in need of something to give you some energy throughout the day. Are you willing to connect with me? And, and this dining is, is, is dining with him daily that brings transformation. Dining him with, with him daily brings transformation. And so, and so he asks us to accept that daily invitation uh, to a lifetime transformation for a lifetime transformation. So proceeding forward with this 21-day fast, what God is calling for all of us here to do, including myself, is to, to, to spend more time with him. Accept that invitation that he gives us. Not to, not to run from it or to give excuses for it, but rather to go to it and say, God, all right, I'm going to connect with you. I'm going to connect with you. Now this Sabbath, I, 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 wanna, I want to do um, specific appeals specific appeals because we're coming to the end of this 21 day fast and and for some of us we've connected with God in a way we can't even imagine and and for some of us we're longing to connect even more and so I want to uh, the first appeal that I want to make and and for those online if you want to answer these or, or, or come or, or you know respond to these appeals you can feel free to connect with either myself or one of the elders and we're going to try to try to get you get you in on it too but the first appeal is for those who are saying that I want to go deeper in my relationship with Jesus and I want to proclaim to the world my, my commitment to him. If, if, in, if in the bottom of your heart you believe God is calling you to do Bible studies headed for the direction of baptism and this is something that's impressed on your heart, then I want to invite you to stand and come to the front because we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you that God works in your heart and we're going to pray for you that as we go on this journey to baptism, that will be a real true opportunity for you to proclaim to the world your commitment. Amen and amen, brother. For those that really want to make that commitment, we, I want to give you the opportunity to come up. And you can space out a little bit. Don't feel like you've got to get extra close or anything. But, but you can space out. Um, the, next, the next appeal that I want to give is I want to give a, an appeal for, for rededication. Like maybe, maybe you've given your heart to the Lord before, but after this experience or maybe after some experience that took place in 2020, you want to give your life again to the Lord in a new way. If this is you, then I call you to stand. I call you to stand. Uh, I call you to stand and, and, and proclaim saying, God, I want, I, want, I, want, I want to recommit. 2021, I want to be close to you. I'm, I'm, I'm counting the cost, and I'm like, yo, it doesn't even matter. Like, I'm, I'm committed, and I want to rededicate my life to you. If that's you, I want you to stand. Amen and amen. Amen. I'm telling y'all, God, God's about to do something here at First Tulsa. God's about to do something in our families, and God is really about to do something in our lives this year. Can we get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. All right, uh, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. For those that came to the front, uh, just stay by. I'm just going gonna, gonna to pray with you, um, and then we're going to connect. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just want to thank you so very much. I want to thank you so much because you took us on a journey. You took us on a journey of 21 days of fasting and praying, Father. You took us on a journey. Um, even before that, Father God, there's journeys that have taken place and there's people who wants to dedicate their lives to you, uh, uh, rededicate their lives to you. No matter what the case is, there's people that are leaving this 21 days saying, God, it's time for that daily depth. I don't want just 21 days in a year. I want to give 365 days in a year, Lord, every single day, uh, an opportunity to go deeper with you. And so, Father God, I just want to pray. Pray that you may be with us this Sabbath. 
encourage us, strengthen us this Sabbath, that, Father God, we may go forth in power. We may go forth in might, and we may go forth in strength. God, we thank you, we love you, and we pray all of this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. amen. Please stand and join us as we sing, Take My Life and Let It Be. Take my life and let it be, consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let it move at the impulse of Thy love, at the impulse of My feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Always only. Sabbath day in which we have to be able to connect together with family and friends, but Father God, most importantly, to be able to connect with you. And I just want to pray that, Father, as we go uh, throughout this next, uh, this next week, that you may give us the energy, the strength, and the willpower, and the mindset to be able to seek and to have that daily depth with you. Father God, we thank you for this past month, and we thank you for the months to come, Lord, and we pray all this in Jesus' precious and holy name on the Sabbath day. Amen. Amen.